the next one we have is the Waimato, um, Fendleton Waimati Heward Community Board, Bridget Williams. Uh, Tina Koto Katoa. Thank you so much, councillors and Mia, for um, letting the, uh, the board speak to its submission for the LTP. And I just want to say that Deputy Chair David Cartwright would be here with me today, but I've just been told that he has two flat tyres and I have photo <laughs> evidence uh, to confirm that that is true. So I will... <laughs> with regards... <laughs> With regards to um, have we got the right game? Sorry, have we got the game plan right um, through to disposal of council-owned properties? I will take the submission as read regarding those elements. I think it's quite clear within our submission what our position is, and in the best interest of time, I would like our board to speak to um, the capital projects and some of the other community projects as well that has come through community um, organisations and residents. So our board has always been acutely aware of the need to be financially prudent with spending in order to keep rates as low as possible. This is why our board has not come to council each year with a long wish list of projects they would like to have funded. Over the past 10 years, our board has only asked for five capital projects to be considered for funding through annual plans and long-term plans. Two of those projects remain on our list of requests for this coming LTP, that is Bishopdale Toilets and Gardner's Road Footpath. So the other two, um, we have been, yeah, sorry, I'll keep going. So as the councillors will be aware, each board has developed their community board plans, which identified key projects the board want to achieve during its three, its three year term. And the development of these priorities was done with input from our local communities and residents. So out of the nine priorities, our board has identified two have already been completed and two are currently underway utilising our own resources in partnership with the local community. So the two that have been um, completed is the caretaker's house, which was um, demolished at Burnside Park. Um, also the big belly bins. So uh, our board contributed 16K, our community board contributed that amount to the big belly bins to be put out into different parks around the ward. And then the two that are ongoing is safety initiatives and car parking on Rusley Road. <coughs> the remaining five priorities will require some financial support from council, which we are asking the council to consider for inclusion for this long-term plan. And they are the augmentation of island stream. So this is reinstating the island stream and fixing the water flow issues. So the board has worked with council staff and the local community to look at ways to address the issue. Staff have provided a response back to the board indicating that the only viable option would be the installation of a new bore at Crosby Park. The estimated cost of this is one th sorry is 130,000. There is currently no budget allocated for this project and the board are requesting the council include this project in the LTP. <coughs> the other is the upgrade of the toilets and changing room facilities at Nunwick Park. So this is a highly utilized facility. And the toilets and sports storage facility at this park was constructed in the late 1980s. And as the building would benefit from strengthening work, the board is keen to investigate whether the building is still fit for purpose and the feasibility of building new changing room facilities. There's the construction of a shared cycle pedestrian footpath on Gardner's Road between Sawyer's Arms and Wilkinson's Road. So this is an area of the city that is experiencing growth and there is currently no footpath or safe cycling space from Wilkinson's Road to Sawyer's Arms Road and a shared path would greatly improve the safety of pedestrians and cyclists, particularly children who bike to school. We also have the replacement of the public toilets at Bishopdale Mall. So this is a long-standing request, we've asked this for many years. And the board's preference would be for a new standalone toilets to be built on the land where the old Plunkett rooms were recently demolished. And we also finally have the development of the council-owned land adjacent to Tullet Park into additional playing fields for the club. 
The board would like to request that staff investigate the opportunity to extend the playing area of the park by developing the council-owned land. So those are our five priorities. And as you will see in our submission, in addition to our board plan priorities, we are also seeking support towards a couple of other projects that the community has asked us to advocate for on their behalf. So there is the retention of the pedestrian cycleway through Ministry of Education land on Island Road. And since we wrote our submission, I'm very pleased to be able to update the council. And thanks to Sarah Pallett, that, um, who has been collaborating with us on this, is that the Ministry of Education have reconsidered their decision and they are now looking to include the retention of this path in their new development. However, they are keen to look at par a partnership with Council where they would cover the cost of the construction of the path but would seek Council support to provide the lighting. There's also the Belfast Netball Club so the board are supporting the submission from the club regarding bringing forward the repairs to the courts. The funding for this project is not allocated until 2027, and we agree with the club's request that this work needs to happen as soon as possible, as it is a safety issue for the court users. And then we also have right-turning arrows at key intersections in our board area. So as you will see in our submission, residents have requested the installation of right turn arrows at a number of different intersections in our board area. And the board is keen to work with the transport unit to help prioritise these intersections. Um, which brings me to one of the other elements that we raised at the start of our submission, which is the board would strongly recommend that the council assign to each board an appropriately sized maintenance budget in the delegation and the delegation to prioritise the maintenance needs in their local communities. We think this is something um, that the board can definitely assist with. It can help streamline the process and, of course, um, allows residents to get to know how their board can advocate for them further. So thank you so much for listening. That is our submission. Happy to take questions. Thanks very much. And I, can I just pick up that um, uh, pedestrian cycle path through the Ministry of Education land? I was thrilled to see that there because um, it was. I went to the sod turning at uh, the new school um, merger site, and uh, this was an issue that was raised with us there. So, really pleased to see that. Um, do you have any idea what the um, cost of lighting is, and whether we did we did we currently put the lighting in for the current um, cycleway through there? Oh, I wouldn't be able to answer that, and I couldn't ask an right. answer to what the cost would be, but right. um, that is something that I'm sure we can. Yeah, no, well, we can follow out. up with stuff. Yeah. I just thought you might know off the top of your no, head. No, sorry. Sorry, I had uh, Jake, and well, we'll see how we go with yeah. time. Um, really quickly, just looking at the the rates section of your submission, um, just wanted to know: do, do you think we've got it sort of wrong with five percent, or what's your what's the board's view on that? So to answer this, I would say that the board recognises that the council is in a very difficult position when it comes to um, how we're going to pay for things. We have had it's been a difficult and unprecedented time, but in saying that, um, our our board would like to see a more transparent approach to the rate spend um, that clearly measures the outcomes and improvements in operational services achieved as a result of the increased rates. Yeah. Andrew and Anne. Thank you. Um, I don't think you mentioned it either in the written submission or in the um, verbal presentation. Does the board have a position on the proposed cuts to community funding, either supportive or opposing of that? So we would be uh, in agreement with what has been said from other community boards. Um, we believe the community is the backbone to a healthy society, so we, would be, um, we wouldn't want to see cuts being taken for those community groups. So you oppose the um, proposed cuts? Yes, we would Thank oppose. Thank you. Anne? Good on. Thanks, Bridget. Um, interesting, um, your thought about bringing maintenance budget into community board um, control, I suppose. Mm. How, how do you see, you know, what would that cover? Have you had thoughts about that as a board? I mean, for our board, the, the issues that we're getting consistently are things to do with trees, um, right turn arrows, um, parking, things that are already, um, things that we have, uh, I suppose, are, you know, fingers on the pulse when it comes to issues in the community. 
and I'm not exactly sure what that would look like, but if that is something that could be explored, is it could be a way to streamline those processes and allow communities to come to us and know that those are areas that we can specifically assist and we have budget for it and we know what that budget is. Yeah. Yeah, the, the way I read it, because I actually referred to the issue in my um, star column, which was uh, essentially some were saying that, that the community boards might be better at setting priorities for you know minor maintenance spend rather than you know we're not talking about major capital budgets but um, uh, rather than having to come back through council exactly yeah. thank you Yanni. thank you. you you've talked about the maintenance but I guess I just wanted to be clear because in some of your response you talked about capital so would you like would you like us to think about also giving um, a, a certain amount of capital expenditure to the board? each board to do you know, the capital priority projects within the awards as well? Uh, that isn't something that we have discussed. For, that, for this particular issue around the maintenance, it was more, um, it, were, it, it, it wasn't. It was your phrase, finger on the pulse. That's what That's I, I was attracted yeah. to that. Yes. It really summed it up well. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> OK, you. and that's, I know I intervened because you come to the 10 minutes. So thank you very much, Bridget. Thank it's so been um, an incredibly thoughtful um, submission, really appreciated. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the next one.